So here's an amazing story. About 10 years ago, there was a doctor in Belgium who was an anesthesiologist, and he would give different painkilling drugs to his patients, mostly women going in for breast cancer surgery. So there were four drugs that he gave, and he decided one day he wanted to see how well those women did like a year or two after the surgery, whether, you know, whether they had had recurrences of their, of their disease. So three of the drugs had no particular effect. The women got the relapses uh, more or less as they expected them to. But with one drug called Ketorolac, they saw a tremendous decrease in the number of relapses or recurrences. It was about 80% less than what happened with the other drugs. This is an incredible thing to have happen. And he wrote this up in a journal article, I think in, in 2010, and then some other people picked this up. And more recently, uh, there was a textbook published um, on this topic by somebody at Harvard and somebody at the National Cancer Institute in Milan, Italy, um, basically laying all this out. So Keturilac, interesting drug, it's about a uh, less than a dollar, about 80 cents per, per uh, pill if you buy it as a you know, prescription drug. And it's part of that class of drugs called NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So it's very similar to aspirin, uh, Motrin, Advil, and some of the other common drugs that people take against inflammation. Um, the people in this study, they basically got one injection of the drug immediately um, at the time of the surgery in order to decrease their pain in, uh, you know, from the surgery. But uh, some other places people are using, like taking it in pill form over a period of three days. Uh, the purpose, the reason for this is that um, when your body sustains a wound, and that's what surgery is, right? It's a kind of a, a deliberate uh, wounding uh, for good purpose. Uh, but anyway, when that happens, then there is a, an inf, inf, inflammation response. It's called systemic um, inflammation, meaning that uh, certain uh, chemicals are released into the bloodstream that uh, promote healing and growth. This is normal. This is good, right, for the normal cells. But if you happen to have any stray cancer cells left in your body after the operation, then they can start growing and they can start developing their, uh, a new blood supply. And, of course, cancers need uh, a good blood supply to bring them the food that they need to grow and also take away the waste materials. It's said that if a cancer doesn't have a blood supply, it wouldn't grow any larger than the, than the tip of a pencil. But, of course, with the blood supply, a year or two later, a certain percentage of women are going to have relapses of their, of their breast cancer. This is a tragic consequence of uh, after surgery uh, for that breast cancer, that the surgery um, was not effective, it was not really effective for in the long term, and in fact may have contributed to the, uh, the, the re-establishment um, of that cancer in this way that I just told you about. So, uh, Mike Retzke, who is a uh, research fellow at Harvard, has said that if his wife was confronting breast cancer surgery, he would definitely recommend that she take uh, Ketorolec. I totally agree with that. Uh, look, the drug is um, almost entirely non-toxic, I mean, in the way that it's being given. It's no more dangerous than, uh, than um, Advil or, uh, or any of these other uh, NSAID drugs. Uh, secondly, the cost is ridiculously low, uh, about 80 cents per, per tablet, and um, it may do a world of good. Uh, so why not do it? I mean, it just seems logical to me that uh, you, t you try this um, in order to perhaps prevent this you know, tragedy from occurring in people who should be cured of their breast cancer, but obviously are not being cured because things have somehow gone wrong. In any case, I think that uh, it's worth further exploring this, this topic. Um, uh, till next time, this is Ralph Moss for Moss Reports. Mm -hmm.